As you're being seated today, I want to remind you that we're going to go to a passage of Scripture that uh, kind of, you might say, although it never concludes it, we always celebrate the birth of Christ every day. But it sort of concludes the Christmas story as Matthew records it. In a few minutes, I'm going to read you a passage that I, I think is a beautiful passage of Scripture. It is a very challenging passage. It is a passage that's going to leave us this morning with some, um, with some fresh challenges in our own life as we get into 2021. We're all praying. You're exactly right, Pastor Butch. Pastor Brian and I talk about it and others. We're all praying desperately that 2021 is going to be a little bit easier year on our world than 2020. But listen to me. For everything that has transpired in 2020, now you listen to me, God has had a reason for it. Brian, it, COVID turned your student ministry upside down. God had a reason for it. It's turned our worship and our preaching and our music and everything upside down. God had a reason for it. It's challenged us. It's worried us. It's made people afraid to come out. Still are. And I'm like you, Butch. I understand there's a new strain coming out across the ocean. And that's all. We don't want to hear that. But if it does, God's got a reason for it. Now, when we come to the text we're going to read this morning, I love our ladies who decorate, but please don't put that tree there next year. Danny, I'm going to let you take this one home with you after a while. <laughs> I love this story. There's so much reason. Now, bear that word with me for what we're about to read. It's the story of the wise men. And unfortunately, we preachers only, usually, can I get an amen, preacher? Only if we do it all, we only preach on this about once a year. Because we know it follows uh, in order in Matthew's gospel the birth story of Christ and then the story of the wise men. I love the story and I almost went a different direction this week. But it seemed like the Lord said no. Just preach a simple message on the wise men. And I said Okay, Lord, what am I supposed to say? And it was very clear. Here's what I'm here to tell you this morning. Now, you listen to me. Wise people still seek Jesus. The world may not seek Christ like we want the world to seek Christ. But wise men seek a relationship with Jesus Christ. You want to meet a wise person? I'll show you a wise person. When that person steps up and says, it's all about Jesus, there's a wise person. Last Tuesday, as I sat in the infusion room down at Charleston, there was a young man, I say young, Wayne, he was 52. To me, that's young. He sat across from me there in the infusion room and he was taking various treatment and I was getting my treatment and the nurse was working between the two of us. And I said to the nurse, are you ready for Christmas? And she said, as we all will say, well, not exactly. I'm going to move the stand and the trees and everything else. Not exactly. I said, well, honey, if you know Jesus, 
you're ready for Christmas. And across that room, diagonally, probably as far as for me to Jay, this man looked up from his iPhone, his smartphone, and he said, Mr. Didn't know me from Adam Butch. Mr. I'm glad to hear you say that. It's all about Jesus. I find out later the man is dealing with the same disease that I'm dealing with. He's a child of the king. He's a member at First Baptist Church Columbia, Michael. It's amazing what you learn if you just start talking about Jesus. And member of First Baptist Columbia, that church has had a toll took on it due to COVID as well. A lot of their staff, Brian, have been sick with it like crazy. Their pastor, their student pastor, their music pastor, everybody. And we begin to talk, and we talk about the love of God and the meaning of Christmas until he got up to leave a few minutes before I finished to get up to leave. I want to talk to you today for a few minutes about a beautiful story that wise men, Jay, seek Jesus. Wise men seek Jesus. Guys, if you would, put it up on the screen for me, the scripture passage, and let's just read it right off the screen. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem. Saying, catch this question, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star, underline and circle that, in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled. And all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. So they said to him in Bethlehem of Judea, For thus it is written by the prophet, But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you, catch this church, shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod, watch Herod here, watch him. You know he's up to no good. You know he's up to no good, Brother Brad, when he had secretly called the wise men, determined from them what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the young child. Underline the word child. Jesus is not a baby anymore. Am I right? Jesus is probably, scholars feel by this point, two, three, Years old, I'm just guessing right in there. Because the very terminology from the Greek to the English moves from babe to child. Catch that. Now he's a little child. Can you see the preciousness of Jesus? Deanna, think about that. Wow. Jesus running around the house. Isn't it amazing? Think about that. Search carefully for the young child, and when you have found him, watch Herod here. Bring back word to me that I may come and worship him also. When they heard the king, they departed. And behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them, Till it came and stood over where the young child, there's the word again, was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. This very thing we preached on last Sunday. 
When they had come into the house, they saw the young, there it is again, child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Circle those three gifts. You can't miss this. Then being divinely warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod. I've been telling you, watch Herod here. Watch him. Watch him. He's up to no good. They return, that, that they should not return to Herod. Being divinely warned of that, they departed from their own country another way. This morning, what I want you to understand as we read this passage of Scripture, for a few minutes, I want us to analyze the lives of these wise men. Most of us say, well, uh, that won't take long. There, there wasn't but three of them. The Bible doesn't tell you there were three wise men. Three gifts. Butch, how many could there have been? That's exactly right. Did you catch that? They had an entourage. That means a big group of people. <laughs> we don't know exactly, Brother Charles, how many wise men there were that traveled that time. We do know they brought three gifts that are very, very significant. We're going to see what they were for in a moment. But when I read that story again and again, and, and Lori reads to me due to my eyes giving me trouble, and, and she read it to me and read it to me. Church, there are three things that I want to point out to you today that we glean from the story of these wise men. And but you're right, maybe they're entourage. <laughs> but these, these, we call them three. These wise men that tell us what it takes to be a man or a wise man or a wise woman to seek Jesus. Number one, think about this. Wise men still approach. Write that word down. Still approach Jesus. The term that you will see in some scholars and some commentaries is the word magi. It means these men were educated in philosophy, medicine, religion, science, and the list goes on. We also know that they were interested in a study of the heavens. Ah, reason for then God getting their attention through the star. They were interested in a study of the heavens. The story makes it very clear, if you think about it, that these wise men their Both many scholars think they traveled hundreds and hundreds of miles. They didn't travel by automobile. <laughs> they traveled by foot, by camel, by donkey, in whatever way they could make their journey. And the trip would have lasted maybe a year, maybe longer. We don't exactly know. They approached Jesus. Also, these wise men who remember I believe we're on a spiritual journey. Think about that. They were definitely, definitely impressed by the Holy Spirit of God to seek Jesus, the Messiah, who had been, as the Scripture said, prophesied. Let me ask you a question this morning on this Sunday after Christmas. Do you understand today that your life is also on a spiritual journey. Life is not just about how many years 
10, 20, 50, 80, 90, that you live on earth. It is about the preparation you and I make for eternity. You see, Brother Bill, I could live 90 years or I could pass away today. I don't know. But what matters is my spiritual journey. That's, that's ultimately what matters. And the Magi, the, the wise men, they were literally on a spiritual journey led by the star that God had placed for them to follow, the light. And where were they headed? To Jesus. To Jesus. Brother Mark, the greatest place you'll ever go is to Jesus. The greatest thing you'll ever experience is Jesus. The greatest person your family will ever know is Jesus. And that's true for everybody in this room and everybody in this world. The approach, just keep that in mind. So let me ask you today, what are you doing in your life as we are about to start a new year? What are you doing in your approach to Jesus? Oh, well, Pastor, I, I'm already a believer. Wonderful. I pray you are. Amen. What are you doing to disciple yourself? What are you doing to grow from where you are now to where you and I need to be with Christ? We've got a problem in most churches today that we wonderfully, gloriously, we accept Christ, but we don't go any further. We sit down and we're happy, and we should be happy, Brent, to know we're going to heaven. But how sad it is to see a baby remain a baby. Friday night, we spent, <laughs> you know where I'm going with this, don't you? Friday, this is my sermon, Brian, but she's going to be a part of this one in a minute. Friday night, we were at Lori's mom's house. We were able to bring her home uh, for about four hours from the rehab center and uh, have Christmas with her. And Tiny, I don't think the woman's ever been happier in her life. She got out of that rehab center for five hours or something like that and got to come to her house and eat, what they call that dip, dog food? They did, Tiny. They called it sausage and cheese dog food. Y'all ever had any dog food? You dip your little taco chip down in it, Charles. It's good. But she was happy. Well, among our 20 people with our masks on was the newest arrival in the family. She's about 10 months old, 11 months old, and her name's Elina. Nine, ten months old, already walking. Kind of like this, but walking. <clears throat> she stole the show. I mean, Wayne, nobody cared what we ate, what we unwrapped. No, it didn't matter. Alina stole the show. Little bitty girl. Not quite a year old. Now, wouldn't it be sad, Brother Bill, if Alina all of a sudden... Stop growing. Think about it. She remained a less than one year old infant in her body, in her mind, in her, in her, in herself for the rest of her life. And listen, we've all seen that. We know what that sounds like, looks like. Maybe you even know in your family what it feels like. I don't know. Wouldn't that be sad? Because right now, she's all over the place. I mean, and get this. You know what she wants most of all? Not even a year old? Cell phone. Yeah. She grabbed that smartphone, and I'm saying, child, what are you doing? 
And I believe she could have told me. And I'm like, I don't know how to do all that. I can't turn mine on and off, much less operate it. And, but wouldn't it be sad if she never grew? And I'm going to tell you a sad, sad, sad story. A lot of people do approach Christ and they do come to know Christ in their personal Lord and Savior, but they never grow one iota past that initial point of salvation. And that is sad. How about you? Are you approaching Christ, Brother Brad, and are you driving yourself to get closer to him in 21 than you might have been in 20? And I said drive yourself because it takes discipline. Discipleship, discipline, the words kind of go together, don't they? It takes discipline. It's all right, so here we are. These wise men, they approached Jesus. But look at this. Number two, wise men still adore Jesus. Rick, wise men adore Jesus Christ. What does that word adore mean? Worship. Worship him. Go back to the text of Scripture, and what do you see outlined there? That they came, the wise men made their way to the house where the Christ child was, and they worshipped him, Wilda. How do you adore Christ? One of the ways you adore Christ, and I, and I, and I want to compliment this church again. See, I don't want you to ever leave here thinking the preacher's fussing at you. I want you to leave here knowing how much I love you, how proud we are of you. They brought three gifts. Did you catch that? You've known this all your life. Gold. Gift fit for the king. The king. Brian, we're not here just to worship anybody. Do you understand, church, this morning, we are right here in this place at this hour, 947. Can't be. Back it up, Brian. Give me 20 more minutes. No, I'm kidding. 947. We came here for a reason, Wilda, to worship the king. I didn't come. I love you, but I didn't come to see what you wore new for Christmas. I, I didn't care, come to see. Do y'all notice my, my snowflake tie? Ain't that pretty? Be prettier if it was about right here, wouldn't it? Charles, you can get your four wheeler out and we can go riding. I didn't I love you with all my heart, but I didn't come to see what you wear, what you brought, what you got. I came here today to worship my king. That's what they did. They brought gold, a gift, fit for the king. Well, what in the world is frankincense? That is a priestly gift. It's literally what it's called. You know what it is, frankincense? This is a priestly gift used in the worship at the temple when sacrifices were offered. And they brought myrrh. You know what myrrh is for? It was an embalming fluid, if you'll let me use today's terminology, to prepare a body for burial. So here we are, Brother Danny, at the Christ child's home, already giving him gifts to prepare his body, catch it church, for the sacrificial death that he came to offer us. Now get a hold to that. Jesus said himself, I have come to seek and save that which is lost. Friend, the last time I checked, we're either lost or are we saved. There is no in between. There is no, well, I'll get it right when I get on the other side. No, my friend, it's too late. My friend, you're going to die one day and you're either going to heaven 
or you're going to hell. It's got nothing to do with what you own, what you have. It all has to do with Jesus. We must adore him, worship him with all that we are and all that we have. That's what the wise men did. They laid the most precious, the most costly gifts at the feet of that little child. That ought to touch your heart. See, that's why I want to thank you, church. Now, I know we didn't necessarily bring gold in here or frankincense and myrrh and lay it at the altar, but, but, but we give of our talents. We give of our service. We do give of our tithes and offerings. Brian, I love a statement you made a few weeks back in one of the sermons. The church, for the most part, you remember this? Cannot say we don't have any silver and gold. There may be churches struggling with that, but Brother Glenn, let me tell you, God's been good to us. We ain't had to worry about paying the power bill, have we, brother? We may have got shocked by it a few times when we opened it up, but we, we didn't have to worry about it. God's been good to us. And we need to adore him. Not just because of spiritual, uh, uh, physical blessing, but mainly because of spiritual blessing. But notice something else, another point. Wise men still acknowledge Jesus. I'm going to have to move quick. I'm running out of time. Must acknowledge Jesus. Let's go back. Let me read you something. Go back with me. Brian, would it be possible up top there to go back to verse 10 or 11 or 12 with me? If not, I understand. Whatever. Okay. Let's go back. Let me give him time to find that. Listen to me. Acknowledging Jesus. Now, let me tell you something. You're about to read a little section here in verse 10, 11, 12 of chapter 2 that's going to help you understand that when they acknowledged the light of God, the Christ child, that it changed their life. It even changed, listen to me, the direction that they took back home. Didn't it? It's right there. Can you find it for me, buddy? There we go. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding the great joy. And here's what I want you to get. Again, the adoring part. When they'd come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. When they had opened their treasures, I love that word treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Now catch verse 12. Then, being divinely warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod. Remember, I've told you all along, watch Herod. Watch Herod. He's jealous. He's jealous. He wants all the male babies killed, male children. Remember that. He's not going to be challenged to the throne. Not Herod. When they should not return to Herod, they departed from their own country another way. May I submit to you this morning that when these wise men met Jesus, approached Jesus, adored Jesus, and acknowledged Jesus, it not only changed their direction going home from a divinely appointed word from God, but it changed their hearts. Jesus is the only one who can change your heart. You may as well quit trying to do it yourself, Michael. You can't do it. Brad, you and I might as well quit trying to say, well, New Year's here in four days. I'm you, how many of us have said it? I'm going to turn over a new leaf. You can turn over all the leaves you want to until you turn your life to Jesus. You're never going to make it. You can turn over and have all the resolutions you want to. But until you get redemption, you're never going to make it. 
the wise men still seek Jesus. But we must give ourselves as an offering. Come here, guys. 